guys, this is Hitman HD, and this is the beginning of a series I'm starting to teach people who have just downloaded Cinema 4D or want to get into using Cinema 4D how to use it from the ground up. Um, so start at the basics, as is the first episode or lesson, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to start with the very basics, which is the render settings. Now to, rend to set the render settings, click this button here, you just leave this bit, go to output. And if you want full HD, 1080p, type in 1920, and press tab twice, and 1080. That's full HD. If you want 720 HD, 720p, type in 1280, or 720. If you're doing, I'll just put it back to normal quickly. If you're doing something like a background or just text, you can leave this as zero to zero current frame. If you're doing an intro, click all frames, and it will never miss anything you make. So you can put a bit down here to as high as you want, and it will capture everything. Whereas sometimes it goes to manual, and you'll put it up to the frames, and you'll add in some more frames, and it will miss parts of the video. Anyway, if you're using it to make something like text, like if you're using it to make a text for YouTube background, the best thing to click is PNG just here. And what this does is if you click this one here and this one here, that will get rid of the background, so you'll get just the text on its own. And to save it, you click this button here, little dots, and choose where you want to save it. I save mine to my desktop. You type in a name, if we only to save it, so this is called a tutorial. Press enter, and see now that's got everything set up already. Multi pass, you won't worry about that, or anti editing. Options. Now, if you haven't got the most powerful computer in the world, you can want to change these three numbers here to 636. That give you the same effect, but it will lower the render time. But we'll just, not really, we'll just leave those as it is. Right, that's your render settings. Now, for the very basics, you're going to want something along the lines of a floor, most probably. Now, there are two ways you can go about using a floor. You can either put in a floor like this, or what some people prefer to do is oh, where is it? Use a plane. There it is, just underneath this box. Hold down a click. That's a plane. People prefer to use these because these bits here, you just stretch it straight up. And you can make it a lot bigger than a floor. If you just hold like that, type in nine 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 nine. Press enter, and then same here. It takes the maximum it can be, and it goes on forever. So that's the alternative to using just a floor, you can use a plane instead. But for this song we need a floor. Now for a floor if you just render that, it's going to be boring grey line when the floor stops. It's actually not when the floor stops, stops over there. Anyway, if you're going to put some text in, click MoGraph, it's a text object. Now you've got text, and you change it by going over here, this bit here. Just change it to tutorial. And just click out of it, so anyway there, click, and you'll change. Change the font, click font, cut out whichever font you want. I'm just going to use that one. If you want to make it deeper, so more three dimensional, sort of this way, you go to this bit here called depth, and you, get, you move the mouse up and down. If you click and hold the arrow, click and hold it up or down, just click and hold, it does it by itself, or you move the mouse up and move it the way you move your hand. So you can make that a bit more, but that's about 60. Height down here, just get back down to where I was. A bit here it says height, this will change the size of the text. Instead of changing the font size in something like Photoshop or Word. Horizontal spacing, this will change the gaps between each letter. Put that back to zero. You can use it to go the other way and make sort of logo shaped sort of things. Some people choose to make their logos like this. Vertical spacing, that doesn't really make much difference unless it's to its text underneath each other. Um, so if I was to render this now, click this button to see a preview. And it's just white with black. It's actually gone under the floor slightly as well, I think. Bring it up slightly. <coughs> and to make this look better, you're going to want a light so you can see the floor. This will put a light in. If you just click here, hold the mouse, click light, or just click it once. You then click this arrow here, hold it down, and raise the light up. You then click the render preview again, and now you'll see it's reflecting around it. Another way of doing this is if you click and hold here and go to array, drag the light into the array, you will then get several lights all around. If you click array, 
I've got copies seven. If you take that down to three, that'll be four copies because it's one light including three copies. So you've got four copies there now. If you was to raise it up, if you want it to be further away, uh, further outwards, go to the radius, make it higher so those lights go further out. Drag that up, and now that'll be very brightly lit. And as you can see, the text has gone stupidly white. So if you double click down here in this box to get material, click here, drag it to black. I'm using black as an example so you can see it. Drag it, and if you drop it on the word itself, or drag it up here and drop it on the text object, click render again. You can now clearly see it. If you want it to have some sort of shadow, using something like the lights, if you go to the light and go to shadow maps, click shadow there, go to shadow maps soft. Now that's more for intros, but it will give it a slight shadow there. If you're doing a different version, which I'll show you in a later lesson, or I might show you continue continue on into this one. There's different types of shadows you can do. There's this one, and if we just get rid of the lights quickly, get rid of that material, get rid of the array. <coughs> Uh, ah, press. You won't be able to do this, but if I press Shift F8, this over here comes up. You won't have this. This is out of a Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro. I recommend buying it. And double click Ring Light. Now, what this does is creates a ring of lights, as you can see it, above your um, scene. So when you press a render preview, it comes out a nice, smooth colour. And to make this look a lot better, your shadows in text for the zoom in slightly. I'm going to quick break to preview that. It's running a bit slower on recording, sorry about that. And you see it's given shadows underneath and slight shadows inside. But if you want it to be more realistic, more realistic shadows, you go to your render settings up here. You click effect and ambient occlusion. So you click that and close this. When you render it, it will take slightly longer to render because it's got to make in more realistic shadows, like add them in. And it's going to take a while to render, a bit longer for me as I'm recording. But if you look, you can't see much of a difference as I've got shadow maps soft on the lights, but there is more realistic shadows down each side of the letters. And this is really good for making things like intros or backgrounds or anything like that. And another way to make good text. I just click render preview. I'll just, actually, wait. I'll just take take this off. It takes longer to render. Quickly render the preview. And if you see how the text has got sort of a sharp edge, like it's completely clean cut. If you want to change that to make it look a bit smoother, click the text object. Go to caps and fill it cap on this one and fill it cap on this one. What this will do is it will give it rounded edges. If you click that again. Notice the text now got round edges. If they look a bit too big, you can take them down by clicking the radius down. Click it again, it might look a bit better now. And see, now it's got smooth edges. There's no thing you can click to make it different to smooth edges if you want it to be two different layers, or a look of two different layers. Right, it says here, convex, click here, and go to one step. What that'll do is give it like a sharp, flat edge all the way across. Makes it look a lot smoother. What you can do for this, if you drag, uh, which way should it go? Make two materials. Just do more that one called bulb text. That's from the lights, the um, circle of lights. I think it's the black you drag on first. No. Yeah, this color. I right, set this to a color like my YouTube background, sort of light blue. And drag that up onto the text object. Then drag the black on top of that to the text object. Then got blue and the black. If you render that. All you'll see is the black, nothing different. But if we click the black, what's my computer trying to load? Sorry about that. If you click the black, go to selection, type in R, has to be capitals, R1, and enter. If I've done that right, that should, yeah, gives you a black outline along the front line of the text. <coughs> this has gone under the floor slightly. Lift that up, and that will now give you your black line across the front of the text. You can do this for any colours. You can do it through like reflective materials on the outside, on the inside, whatever. <coughs> and that is basically how you do text. Simple looking, smooth text. Um, what else could I do for a lesson?
Um, I could do text movement, I could just do that. If you want to do something like a sort of, if you've got into Simul 40, try and make your own intros for your YouTube channel. If you want to do movement for it, say you want it to come in sort of from this side, maybe do this sort of thing. You move it over here. Turn on auto keyframing here, press Simul 1. Press 0 as a keyframe so it knows where to start. Make sure it's at 0. I'm just going to scroll out because it will go back to where it was. Drag this over to. Oh no, sorry, I've done that wrong. It is. After you've set the keyframe to start with, move to. Sort of, I'm going to start to go to frame 50. You can zoom out a bit. Drag this to the other side. <coughs> then what that will do, press play, that will move it over there. And from there, let's go to sort of frame 80. Drag it back to here. Get a few more frames. Just to get frames, click this up arrow, drag it up, and that'll give you more frames. To view the whole timeline, click this arrow and drag it along. And drag this over to 100, and just have it so that it finishes in the middle like that. Now, if you click back to the beginning, scroll into where you had it originally, click play, it will now come in, go past, and stop. And that is a very basic intro. Some channels would actually like that as an intro. There's some channels that can't sort of aren't very technically skilled or something like that. If they could just watch this tutorial, they could make an intro like that and they'd be happy as anything to have it as an intro. I'm pretty sure someone would. But um Yeah, and I say basically make an intro with text move. <coughs> if you wanted it to do um drops like drop from the sky or something like it was to bounce. If you just sorry if I just control Z that undo all those keyframes bring back to the beginning if you want the text to sort of drop from the sky or something click the floor and go right click the floor go to MoGraph tags rigid body go to this <coughs> if you want it to bounce you want lots of bounce <coughs> if you don't want it to slide too much you don't want quite a bit of friction I don't want it to slide so I'm going to give it some I'll turn also keyframing off <laughs> right, I'm going to give it some friction so it doesn't slide too much. <coughs> oh, sorry, about my <coughs> sorry about my throat, guys. Something stuck in the back. <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, if you had a text object, do the same. Right click, my graph tag, rigid your body. And you trigger immediately. Don't give it too much friction. Take the bounce down slightly because it will bounce on the floor. And if you just scroll that bit, take this up. So it's got a gap to fall from. And click play. It will fall, yeah, it will separate because I haven't joined it together. But yeah, if you just click play, it will separate, fall, and bounce. And you've got a big pile of separated bouncy letters. If you want it to stay together, we just click text object, go to the rigid body. Uh, where is it? Ah, there you go, go to collision, individual elements, click off. Now when you click play, it will say as a big word and bounce like that. If you want it to bounce a bit more, just turn the bounce up a bit. Click play. It'll do something like that. If you want it to um, break apart after a certain time, I'll probably cover that in the next tutorial, but it involves keyframing these little things here, like when you, if I click that, move it to here, and click that, it'll go red. That means it's keyframed to increase to 1.2 at this point. But we don't want to do that. I'll cover that in the next tutorial if people want more of these tutorials. Basically, I'll be doing them sort of once a week, every week, hopefully, as long as I can get time to record. Um, I'll do my own tutorials, my own lessons, and I'll also do anything you guys want to know. So, if there's anything you've seen that you can't find a tutorial for, or you want an uh, in depth tutorial, I'll do my best to. Uh, uh, do my best to bring one out for you. If it's something that you don't know and I haven't done already or used or don't know how to do myself, I will find out how to do it myself and then make an in-depth tutorial for you. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, let us know what you think. Comment, rate, subscribe and all that. Um, and hopefully this has been a good help. So yeah, thanks guys.